So here we have a lymphoid precursor cell which enters the cortex area of the thymus, right? And it moves in through the blood vessel. So the lymphoid precursor cell. Now this lymphoid precursor cell, as I said earlier, is going to mature to become a T cell. However, the lymphoid precursor cell expresses no signs of being a T cell on its surface. Um, so it doesn't express a CD4 or it does not express even a CD8 co-receptor. That is why we call this lymphoid precursor a double negative because it contains no CD4 or CD8 co-receptor, which is required for a T cell. The thymic epithelial cell will assist the development of this lymphoid precursor cell throughout the cortex to become a, a T cell, a CD4 T cell or a CD8 T cell. Now this lymphoid precursor is in stage 1, also known as double negative 1. After some time, with the help of the thymic epithelial cell, it will become a T cell precursor, double negative 2, where it loses its ability to become other type of lymphocytes, such as a B cell. So in the double negative 2 stage, it has already lost its ability to become other types of cell, such as a B cell or a natural killer cell. So it's destined to become a T cell for sure. This precursor T cell is in the double negative 2 stage, where it also begins to slowly express the T cell receptor, but it still does not express the CD4 or the CD8, hence double negative. Again, after some time, with the help of the thymic epithelial cell, the precursor T cell will become a thymocyte, which is still an immature T cell. And this stage is double, double negative 3, uh, which means that it still does not express CD4 or CD8 co-receptor, but it has expressed the T cell receptor. Again, after some time, uh, it enters the double negative 4 stage. And during this stage, uh, the thymocyte will begin to proliferate, meaning it will begin to make many thymocytes. And with the appropriate chemical signals, cytokines, this thymocyte will become a double positive, meaning that it will express both CD4 and CD8 co-receptor, as well as the T cell receptor that was previously expressed. Now, what is the fate of this double positive thymocyte? Well, it can die due to neglection if the thymic epithelial cell doesn't interact with it. And interestingly enough, this is what usually happens to the thymocytes. A majority of them die. But we won't talk about that. Now, alter alternatively, this double positive thymocyte can interact with an epithelial, a thymic epithelial cell. The thymic epithelial cell expresses an MHC receptor on its surface. MHC stands for Major Histocompatibility Complex. The thymic epithelial cell can either express MHC class 1 or MHC class 2, depending on what MHC receptor the double thymocyte will interact with causes will cause the thymocyte to become a single positive thymocyte, either a CD4 or CD8 thymocyte. So for example, if this double positive thymocyte interacts with an MHC class 1 receptor, this double positive thymocyte will become a single positive CD8 thymocyte, or alternatively, if this double positive thymocyte interacts with an MHC class 2 receptor, this double positive thymocyte will become a single positive CD4 thymocyte. Either way, the double positive thymocyte will become a single positive thymocyte. Now, of course, if this double positive thymocyte uh, does not recognize um, our own antigen in that it thinks our own body is a foreign object, this uh, thymocyte will, will be destroyed through apoptosis because we don't want to activate a T cell that thinks our own body is a foreign antigen because then it will start attacking it. And so these type of double positive thymocyte that recognizes our body as a foreign antigen will be destroyed through apoptosis. Now these single positive thymocytes are also known as naive T cells, either naive CD4 or naive CD8 T cells, and they can interact with dendritic cells in the medulla of the thymus. The T cells can scan for antigens on the dendritic cells to become activated. So the dendritic cell can express an antigen on an MHC, and then the T cells can interact with it to become activated. 
But this, this does happen, but only when a pathogen has invaded the body. And so with this, the dendritic cell can then present the antigen of the pathogen to the naive T cells in the thymus so that the naive T cells can be activated much more faster. However, if there is no invasion and the naive T cells have already been uh, produced, they will just migrate, they will leave the thymus and migrate el elsewhere. So the single positive CD4 and CD8s will actually migrate to the peripheral lymphoid organ through the blood vessel. Um, so here leaving the thymus, we have the naive uh, CD4 and naive CD8. And they will migrate to the peripheral lymphoid organs. What is a peripheral lymphoid organs? Well, a lymph node is a good example. And so these uh, naive T cells will migrate from the thymus into the lymph node here, as shown. And remember, in this area, we also have the immature B cell migrating to the lymph node because this is where the immature B cell also gets activated. So let's learn some important areas in the lymph, in the lymph node. This, this middle area here towards the artery and the vein is known as the medulla, uh, the lymphoid medulla. And it consists mainly of plasma cells. It's actually pa uh, densely packed with other cells such as macrophages as well. Then to the outer area, we have what's called the paracortex. And this is where most of the T cells are situated. And then further towards the, towards the outer uh, side of the lymph node, we have the cortex. And the cortex consists mainly of the B cells. And also within the cortex, we have follicles um, and germinal centers where B cells mature in or become activated in. And then we have the afferent lymph vessel, which brings certain cells into the lymph node. And then we have the efferent lymph vessel, which brings cells out of the lymph node, the activated lymphocytes, for example, the activated T and B cells, for example. And we'll look into this uh, soon enough. Now let's just take a cross section or a section within the lymph node here and zoom into this area. So over here we have the lymph vessel circulating within the lymph node and here situated here is the cortex, the outer part of the lymph node with the follicles and germinal centers here in orange. And then we have the paracortex in the middle and the medulla in the inner aspect of the lymph node uh, where the artery and veins come, come through. So the naive T cells which came from the thymus will enter the lymph node into the paracortex through the blood vessel uh, through what's called the high endothelian uh, venule and this process is through diapodesis how it enters so the naive cd4 and cd8 cells enter the lymph node and are positioned or, or are situated in the paracortex and then we have also the immature b cell which came from the bone marrow right and the immature b cell which only expresses igm and possibly igd now uh, goes to the cortex because this is where most of the b cells are situated and remember, both the naive T cells and the naive B cell, the immature B cell, they are not activated. They, are, they have not been stimulated or activated by any form of uh, chemicals or signals. And so we'll just leave them in the lymph node for now, and we'll go back to where our tissue was uh, and our, where our innate immune cells are. And in the next video, we'll see what happens when a pathogen invades the body and how the innate immune system responds. Uh, just an overview sort of thing. So that's the next video. Thanks for watching.